And so that reminds me actually, um, thing that we don't want to do is one, promise somebody that you would keep their, this a secret. Yeah, right? no, like I think in any counseling setting, either it's professional or just friends talking or if you're in a church or mm -hmm. a, a really religious organization, one thing that you don't want to do is to promise to keep a secret. You, like as a counselor, you you respect people right to privacy, but you don't keep secret. I think that's very important. Okay, that, that so let, let's differentiate. Anything. Yeah, let's yeah. differentiate because we. I don't want. I don't want um, my clients to to come to me and kind of go. Well, I don't want to tell you anything because you can't keep anything a secret, right? So uh -huh. so let's let's talk about the the limits, like what confidentiality means, what privileged communication means, and when we have permission to actually break confidentiality, right? Yeah. And so typically when you go to a session, you'll hear things like this. Anything you say will stay between you, me, and these walls, mm -hmm. okay? And that is excluding, that does not include things like if you tell me you want to hurt yourself or other people, if children are being jeopardized or abused in any way, or if elderly are being able, uh, being abused or, or um, jeopardized in any way, right? And so you promise everything except for anything that has to do with the safety of the person and other people, the public. And so you explain to them that, you know, you want to keep the public safe and most of all, you want to keep them safe. Mm -hmm. And so anything that gives you information that may tell them that, that may tell you that they're thinking about hurting themselves, you have to proceed to get them the help they need. Mm -hmm. And so exactly. that's called what we call bridge of confidentiality, right? We not bridge, but uh, that's that's not within public. Uh, what is it? Privileged communication, right? Mm -hmm. Privileged communication is anything but risk to s harm to self or other people. And yeah. so and so, you know, you, I think that this happens a lot with, with kids or adolescents, you know, when they tell their friends something and they say, hey, you promised you'll keep this a secret, right? And then the, and then the friend promises, yeah, yeah, I, I won't tell anybody. And then suddenly they say, I'm going to kill myself today. And then, uh oh, now I've promised that I wouldn't yeah. say it. And yeah. now I'm, now I can't get help, but I don't know how to help either. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's 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 a very dangerous dangerous promise to to keep. Like before you even know what that person is gonna say, it's gonna say to you. To yeah. So yeah. so the thing you want to say is that if they want to tell you, they'll tell you anyway. So the thing that you want to say is you say, well, you know, it, it, it depends. I will try my best, but it'll depend. Mm -hmm. Right. So then you're saying, if yeah, you, yeah. If, if you I can do want it, to I hurt will. yourself, yeah. yeah. If you want to hurt yourself, if if I. I have good reason to believe that someone else is getting hurt. I need to inform people in, in authority. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so you just just say to them, "I will try my best mm -hmm. to keep it, you know, between us, um, depending on what you tell me." Mm -hmm. okay. So you're not making a promise that you will keep everything a secret, but to some extent, if if you can, you will. Mm -hmm. And so I think that that's important. It's that you don't promise somebody that you're going to keep their self-harm thoughts a secret. Mm -hmm. That's first because then the burden is on you and you can't get help anywhere else. And it's just going to be painful to go through that process on your own. 